There is a reason why apps like TikTok and Duolingo feel addictive. They never let users wait. If your app is making users wait, they will leave. So it's time to remove waiting. I boil down what I learned after building over 50 apps in 10 proven tricks. If you want your app to be better and faster, take notes. But before we dive in, let's answer one thing. Why do apps feel slow? And what does it take for an app to feel instant? To find out, I build this simple app. The app has one button. When I press it, the background changes color. But there is one twist. I added a random delay from when the button is pressed to when the background changes color. This delay ranges between 1 millisecond to 2 seconds. After each try, I will have to answer the question. Is it instant, based on how the action felt for me? And after doing this 1000 times, I finally got the result. The magic number turned out to be 100 milliseconds. If the background changes color in less than 100 milliseconds, the app response time feels instant. Anything above that does not feel instant. It turns out that this magic number has not changed for the last 60 years. In his paper in 1968, Robert Miller made the same observations. To put it into perspective, 100 milliseconds is the same duration of an eye blink. If you tap a button and you manage to blink before the action is done, the app will not feel instant. So something needs to happen in less than an eye blink. Okay, so now we know what it takes for an app to feel instant, but how can we achieve it? The biggest reason modern apps have delays is because of data loading. Every time an app does something, it needs to wait for data. The duration it takes for data to load is called latency. Latency generally depends on where the data is coming from. If our data is stored on the device, memory or disk, then generally we don't have any problem. In this case, the latency is less than 15 milliseconds, far above by what is required for an app to feel instant. So we don't do anything. However, if our data needs to be loaded over a network, we have a problem. To get data over a network, the app has to do an API call. This has to travel across continents to a server. The server will take a couple of milliseconds to process it, then it has to travel back to your device. Unfortunately, in most cases, this will take more than 100 milliseconds. So if we don't do anything, our users will not get that instant feeling. Luckily, there are a lot of techniques we can use to hide this delay. We can use UX tricks to give the illusion that our app is fast. Or we can use more advanced engineering techniques to actually make our app fast. Okay, so trick number one is skeleton screens. If you have blank screens like this or spinners, replace them with skeleton screens. This will give the illusion that the page is loaded and is in transition to show. It will prevent the user from thinking that the page has stopped working. Apart from this, it will make the page faster to navigate by showing the user how the page will look like before it's loaded. Tip number two, immediate feedback. If you cannot give the user what they want in under 100 milliseconds, at least acknowledge direction. The simplest way to do this is by visually responding to the tap. For example, highlight the button when it's pressed or give a haptic feedback. Trick number three, optimistic UI. This is when we perform the user's desired action before it's actually done. For example, when you hit the like button on most social media apps, it's actually filled up before the API call is actually sent. This will give the user the illusion that the action was done instantaneously, when in reality, it's still in progress. To actually make your app faster, you can use these more advanced engineering techniques. They are all essentially ways to optimize data flow, since data loading is our main bottleneck. So let's start with technique number one. Caching. This is when frequently used data is stored temporarily on the device so that it can be retrieved quickly. Caching has been used forever. It's very simple to do in any app and it just works. 
Caching works the best when data does not change often. A powerful method is to show cached data immediately while loading fresh data in the background. This way the user never sees an empty screen. Technique number two, preloading data. The most obvious way to make data load faster is by preloading it. This works the best when combined with caching. Let me give you a real life example. One app I built had this screen with hundreds of videos. When the user opened the app, they had to go through an onboarding screen followed by this home screen. But when the app was downloading the videos, there was a huge delay. So I preloaded the videos to a local storage just when the user opened the onboarding screen. The user spends a few seconds on the onboarding screen and this was enough to preload all data. The result was a home screen that feels instant. Technique number three, local first architecture. This is when the app treats the local data as the primary source of truth and syncs with the server only when needed. Instead of waiting on network loading, everything is loaded from the device instantly. It makes the app feel super fast. An advantage of this technique is that the app works even when offline. This also makes it possible to first build an offline version of the app with no backend to test the market. If the app is successful, then you can add your backend later. This will save you a lot of time. A real life example of this is WhatsApp. When you write a message on WhatsApp, it's saved locally, even if the app is offline. Then it is synced in the background when internet is available. The user never notices any lag. Technique number four, lazy loading images. This is a technique where images are only loaded when they are actually needed. Instead of loading all images when the screen is loading, we wait and only download them when the user scrolls to that part. This is very complex, but luckily we have a lot of standard libraries on Android and iOS that do this almost automatically. For example, Nuke, Glide and Coil. In most cases, you can implement them with just two lines of code, so make sure to use them for all your images. Technique 5. Data optimization. This means reducing the size of the data your app loads, so everything uses less bandwidth and feels faster. The simplest way to achieve this is to compress images and videos, especially the ones that need to be retrieved from a network. Images and videos often make the bulk of downloaded data. Large uncompressed images will slow everything down. To compress images and videos easily, I created this macOS app called TinyFast. You simply drag in a folder with all your images, videos and web assets and they are compressed for web. It can reduce the size of images and videos by up to 90%. This can make your app feel much faster, but obviously you need to see what quality your images and videos need to have. Technique six, content delivery network, or in short, CDN. A CDN stores your images and videos on servers around the world closer to your users. This can cut network latency dramatically and make your app much faster. Technique seven, pagination. This is when data is loaded in small chunks instead of all at once. Instead of loading everything, load just enough to fill the screen. More data is fetched when the user scrolls down. This makes the screen load a lot faster. What is great about these techniques is that you can pick more than one for your app. In fact, combining them is when the real magic happens. A modern app needs to make use of all these techniques together to create a user experience that just feels fast. I hope that helps. If app development is something that interests you, make sure to subscribe because I will be sharing more videos about this topic soon.